Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick will React and Angular ever become legacy? So let's get into it. Well, that is a good question. And of course, this is speculation on my part, but I can only look at other similar tools or similar trends in front end. And my answer is going to be yes. It's just a matter of time. Anything, I mean, progress is constant. At some point, regardless of how popular something is, it's going to be switched out for something that is even more popular, or at the very least, it's going to mutate into a very different type of entity than it is today. So I don't see why Angular and React would be a exception to this rule. In fact, it doesn't matter if it's Angular or React or Vue or whichever SBA framework you have around, right? You I mean, if it can happen to jQuery, which by far and wide was like the big, big, big kid on the block before all of this SBA, all these trends kind of came along. I mean, that's basically legacy today. It's, well, it's, it doesn't have to be legacy, but it's all but considered to be legacy, considering that it's not really needed in a software project today in order to deliver to your customers. So having Angular and React go the same way, it makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying that it's going to happen tomorrow or even in a year. It's probably going to take quite a while because as it stands right now, there's a bit, bit of a gap between the only two things that I can see that will change this trend. Now, the thing that killed off jQuery's popularity was, basic, was partly the adoption of SBA frameworks, but I would say more importantly, it was the fact that the, the native APIs caught up to most of the core features and most of the, the convenience, if you will, the standards basically caught up to jQuery. And today, almost everything that you, want, you did in, with jQuery back in the day is possible to do in a pretty sustainable way through the native browser APIs. So you don't really need jQuery unless you have a very specific need or if you still have it around because you've already invested in it a few years back. And that's the sort of thing that could in theory challenge the like React and Angular and SBAs today. If the native browser uh, APIs caught up to such a point where it felt very natural and easy to just use in vanilla JavaScript in the same fashion as you would use say React, then there would be very little point, like, very, like there will be no point in having React around. That happening, I don't, I don't see that happening all in any, any time soon because we're talking about a qu quite a major, major thing here. We're talking about basically creating a standard work process for something that is very, very, very complicated. A lot more complicated if we just think about it conceptually than what jQuery or it was designed to do or what it actually did. Like I'm not trying to say that jQuery wasn't doing something important because it was probably the most important library and still probably is the most important library that has ever been made for JavaScript. But the problem, like the actual problem it's solving is less complicated than the problem that SBAs are trying to solve, at least today. So that's one way of going that that happens. The other way of going is that WebAssembly would become the standard practice when it comes to web development, because that's also something that could come around and become so popular that it, because basically the SBA value, the value of having an SBA is part one part that it's a structured way of working that consistently produces the right results. And the second thing is that it gives a better user experience or a native feel to the user experience. And WebAssembly uh, in, the, in the dream scenario would be able to do that in a much, much better fashion than an SBA could ever, ever hope to do. But the problem with that is that it's still very early stage. And considering that the web is structured and not, it's not just like the web is not just like HTML, CSS and JavaScript, the way the web works today is not just structured around the user experience. There's quite a lot of semantics and other things that come into play when we talk about the web as it stands today. And WebAssembly is not in a position as it stands today to be able to give that in the same fashion. There's tons of stuff that needs to change in order for WebAssembly to become a feasible 
default to creating an entire website. It's a proof of concept right now and there's a lot of potential, but the distance between where it is today and where it needs to be in order for it to become like a just a good solution to build any website is quite large at this point. So what I want you to take away from this is that there is absolutely, it's not, it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when React and Angular and SBAs and so forth becomes a legacy. It might take a year, it might take 10 years, it's hard to say. But at the very least, we can all agree that the trend in IT is that progress continues. You, new tools are developed because of new problems that are based, like we create solutions based on what came before and then we continue that process until we develop new tools. And the SBA problem is a problem that today has two challengers and it basically in my world comes down to either the standards catching up so that you don't really need to see a reason to use a framework like React or sorry, a library like React or a framework like Angular or something like that. There's no point because the browser already has support for all the things that you need or WebAssembly developing to such a point where it becomes standard practice to use that approach instead because then why would you use an SBA? Because then they're basically solving the same sort of problem. But as you can imagine, both of these things are, they're not really around the corner. We're talking about quite a lot of things that needs to happen before this becomes a reality today. At least that's what I think. Have a great day.